So once again, welcome you all to Create a TechConnect series. So in this session, uh, we'll be talking about the uh, re uh, release updates part two. Uh, in our previous session, we had the part one where we talked about the uh, page variables, the application variables on how you'll be able to make use of those variables in your uh, application, uh, in the uh, workflows or in any other part of your application. Moving on to the session today, we'll be talking about few of the release updates and uh, myself, Pungodai, I'll be taking you throughout the session today. So before we uh, move into the uh, session, let me just give you a brief uh, intro about the Creator Technic series. So Creator Technic series is a month-on-month -month session where we delve into the uh, advanced concepts in Creator. And it would... Uh, purely comprised of the technical uh, nuances and the uh, key essentials present in the features in Creator. So before we move into the session, let us take a look at few of the housekeeping rules uh, uh, for the session today. So the attendees will be on mute throughout the session. And if you have any questions, you can post it in the question tab on the left side in your meeting. And the recording of this session will be sent to all the registrants and the participants as well. We also uh, like you to uh, ask you that uh, please participate in the uh, polls and surveys that we'll be handling at the end of the session as well. So now moving on to the session, let us take a look at the agenda for today. Uh, starting with the introduction to the uh, new uh, releases, the products and the enhancements in Creator. And we'll talk, uh, list you the recent uh, product updates and uh, we'll take you to the demonstration of these different features and enhancements in Creator one by one. And also to highlight these features and enhancements, we'll uh, give you the key points and key features present in the uh, uh, product releases. So the recent product updates which we have taken up for this particular session uh, is uh, save form as draft, email analytics in Creator, API v2.1, removing uh, applications from environments and customized portal pages and also uh, the screen record feature for the uh, support, which is uh, powered by the quads and also PDF support in OCR fields. Now, uh, moving on to the uh, new releases, the uh, starting with the saving form as draft. So we know uh, Form is one of the important uh, components in uh, Creator where uh, it acts as a main interaction point between the user and the application. So the user would be able to uh, add in their uh, data and submit the form, right? So let us take a scenario. So what if the user wants to save the uh, data which has been entered by him uh, and they want to make use of it in, uh, in a later while. So using the form save as draft, they'll be able to save their progress at and uh, they'll be able to take it uh, and after a particular period of time. And uh, so if they are unable to complete the form or if they need to switch between uh, devices, like if they're working in their mobile and if they want to switch it to the uh, web, it is possible. And uh, they'll be able to open uh, it after a particular period of time as well. Uh, talking about the uh, form save draft, so I can uh, save a particular draft one and I can work on another draft uh, two as well. So I'll be able to save multiple draft and I can uh, make use of this different draft and uh, edit the particular draft and save it again in the draft itself. So we'll touch upon in detail on how you'll be able to save different drafts and uh, make use of those and submit your uh, forms. So for that, I have taken up a simple uh, application where I've built a form for managing the employee details. So let us uh, move into the demonstration. So this is the application. We have the employee details where uh, this application would be useful for employee management. Mm -hmm. So taking the uh, scenario, if uh, the HR recruit or any user would like to manage their uh, employee details and they are typing out the details in manual. Starting with, so you'll have to give the employee name, right? So I'll be typing the employee details and phone number. 
so you you'll be getting the basic details like the name email id phone number of the employee right so uh, later on you have to get in detail about the uh, employee date of birth address resume details educational work experience and signature so what happens you won't be able to save these data uh, which has been uh, filled so far and uh, i have to go back and uh, go to a new tab for example and if i come back uh, my data won't be saved, right? I'll have to type in the data from the starting. So making use of the uh, form save as draft, I'll be able to save the particular data which has been added so far. So for that, let me get into my uh, form builder. So this is my form builder. Inside my form builder, I'll go into the form properties of this particular uh, employee details form. So you can see we have the form properties visible. So below uh, the uh, options, you have save draft. So when I enable this option, the user will be able to save draft and they'll be able to resume uh, the draft and they'll be able to edit it. So we have saved uh, this uh, particular configuration. Let us go back to the uh, live mode and have access to the application. So this is the form and you can see below we have an extra button added which is save as draft right next to the summit we have save as draft so whenever i type in my data try typing it again so we have uh, typed in the uh, so far uh, known data and now let me try giving save as draft so this draft is saved and where will i be able to view the draft so on top you can see view draft so when I click on to view draft, you can see on the right side, I'll get a pop up uh, where I have my draft added. So on top, you can see we have a notification as well. So the draft older than 15 days will be automatically deleted, which will be automatically erased from your uh, storage here. And what if I want to add a few more drafts? So I, I have uh, the data of one employee. So if I want to go back and add few other data of another employee. So let us try adding. So we know basic details of the another employee. And now I can save this draft again. So we have currently two drafts in our storage, right? We have uh, the employee two and employee one added uh, based on the time which has been saved. And if I want to take back the data from the uh, employee one, I'm using this data from employee one and I'm refilling the data. So I'm giving the date of birth at the address and the city. I'm filling few of the data related to the employee. So now we are done and uh, we have to uh, upload the resume. So currently I don't have the resume of the employee. So what I'll do, I'll save the changes here. So this draft would be saved and when I view and if I reuse it by clicking on it, we get all the data which was already saved and edited and saved by us. So through which I'll be able to uh, save different drafts, uh, different versions of my draft, and I'll be able to make use of them uh, in different devices or later on a particular period. So we will have to keep in mind that we have only 15 days of uh, time duration when you're trying to save the drafts. So now let me take you to a few of the key points that we'll have to keep in mind while we are working with the form save as draft. Starting with number of drafts. So as I was uh, mentioning uh, the duration, we have uh, only a limited number of drafts that can be stored. So for one form, you have around five drafts which can be possibly saved and the duration is 15 days of time and the environments. So talking about environment, so if your application uh, is in uh, the other different two environments, which are the staging or the development, your uh, safe form drafts won't be applicable. Only in the production environment, the safe form drafts would be applicable. And talking about uh, customers who are in the C5 version for Sandbox, the published components would only be able to have access to the safe form as draft. And who will be able to enable this particular options for the user, the uh, super admin, the admin, and the developer. So here you might be uh, raising a, a question, like uh, will the admin or the super admin will be able to view the draft which I saved, the user saved? 
So to answer that, the uh, user who saves the uh, draft would only be able to have access to it. For example, the super admin or the admin won't be able to save your uh, particular draft which you are saving or any other user who would like to uh, have a look at that. Only the user who has access to the, I mean, who enters into that data will be able to view that particular draft. And uh, we have also added few of the use cases where in uh, like filling out applications. So you'll be able to make use of this form save as, uh, save as draft uh, while you are filling out applications. And while you're working out with complex forms as, uh, as in the uh, demonstration, we had to fill out the uh, employee details, the uh, personal details, the um, uh, educational details, and further on. And these can be helpful during these uh, complex form filling and during the taxation process as well. So you'll have to work out with uh, different numbers. You'll have to go back to read a few modules and come back and file your taxation, right? So during that process as well, you'll be able to make use of the form silver draft and during placing orders as well. So you'll have to go switch be uh, between tabs and check the stocks and it will take some time, right? So these are a few of the use cases that we have brought up to you. You can think of uh, other use cases which you can make use of this uh, particular feature in your solutions as well. And now moving on to the next interesting uh, release, which is the email analytics. Uh, talking about email analytics, whenever you uh, send email from creator, so what happens, you send an email to your uh, customer or any user, uh, you don't have any track of your uh, emails, right? So to uh, bring in that particular uh, concept, we have brought in the email analytics. So this would allow you to track your emails, which has been triggered from your account, and you'll be able to uh, understand the usage. I mean, the if the uh, email has been sent to the particular user or the uh, customer or user has uh, entered in inside the particular email or not. So these can be easily uh, captured using the email analytics. And how will you be able to uh, configure the email analytics in Creator? So under operations, you have email management, right? So when I enter into the email management, uh, it will take me to the uh, configuration part where it asks you to configure with Zepto mail. So during this process, what you'll be doing is that you'll be integrating with the Zepto mail and overall uh, email analytics will be handled in the Zepto mail itself. And uh, the uh, other process which were handled in Creator, such as uh, sent, managing the sender email, domain authentication, these and all will be handled inside the Zepto mail hereafter. And how will you be able to uh, configure the uh, Zepto mail options? So let me take you to the step-by-step -step process which is being uh, followed. So first what uh, we'll do is that we'll configure the Zepto mail and when you click on to this particular option, it takes you to the next part where it asks you to set up the uh, account here for Zepto mail. And uh, I'll have to read through the um, um, basic details which has been given about uh, Zepto mail, about the daily limits, the credit system which has been ha uh, handled there and few other terms and conditions. So when uh, you give uh, understand and you create, it takes you to the part where you'll have to create a mail agent. So this would hold all your details from your uh, creator and a separate mail agent would be created in, uh, inside the Zepto mail. And the overall uh, analysis will be handled un under the uh, mail agent. And we have import sender email. So post completion of creating your mail agent, it will ask you to import your sender emails. So which is uh, which was previously handled in your sender email in creator. Now you'll be able to import those sender email into uh, Zepto mail and you'll be able to manage those sender email from Zepto mail directly itself. So when you uh, after you give import, your data would be imported to Zepto mail. And after you give finish, all your analytics can be viewed inside the Zepto mail. So let me take you to the uh, demonstration on how you can make use of the uh, uh, email analytics and uh, how uh, what and all new features have been added into uh, the uh, Zepto mail and which, how it can be useful inside Creator. So uh, where will I be able to uh, handle my uh, email analytics? So under my operations, we have email management. So, so far, uh, I have already configured my Zepto mail here with my Zepto mail. 
and you can see manage sender it will redirect me to uh, zeptml directly so now we'll talk about email analytics so view analytics so you can see uh, in the initial stage it takes me to the uh, my mail agent where we have the default for creator and we have the overview starting with the report so you can see we have uh, the data for last 7 days last seven, uh, 15 days 30 and so on you can also set few uh, durations so this report would give you an idea about the so far sent emails from creator and uh, if it is uh, successfully sent to the user or not uh, and if the user has opened uh, the email which has been sent by you and the number of clicks that has been made inside that particular email. So if you have sent a particular uh, attached and link inside the email, you can also track that if the uh, user has clicked onto that particular uh, link as well. So this is one type of report where you can see the count and the hard bounds and soft bounds. I'll also uh, take you to the part where we'll touch upon what are hard bounds and soft bounds. And we can also categorize based on the uh, bounds. So where we have user not found the connection issue based on these, the email was not sent to the users. And the setup information where we have the API, uh, SMTP and few other details regarding uh, the uh, account. And talking about domains. So if I have already configured domains, it will be visible here and I'll be able to manage those domains from this uh, page itself and sender address. So we know usually uh, in your creator account, we usually configure the sender uh, address apart from the admin. So here we have an extra email which we have configured a sender address. It is visible. So while we were importing, while we were uh, configuring the uh, integration part from creator to uh, Zepto mail, the sender email uh, was uh, imported to the uh, Zepto mail account of mine. And now talking about the process email. So this would have uh, the all the uh, this would list all the emails that has been sent so far. And you also have the subject, the status and the clicks and the opens. Starting with the uh, from and to. You can see the all the email has been sent from the admin to different emails. And you can also see the information on when the uh, email was sent and the subject of these uh, different emails. And the status uh, starts with uh, process, hard bounds, and we also have few of the process here. And clicks and open. So as I was mentioning, so when you're sending an email, you will have to uh, make sure you, uh, the user clicks into the email or opens the email. So these can be monitored using the uh, dashboard over here. And talking about the templates. So if I want to add any template to my uh, email, so I'll be able to add them. So we have few existing template. And if I want to create my own template, which I want to add inside my email, that can also be added. And next we have a webhook. So if I want to uh, get notification, if I, uh, I can, I'll be able to configure the webhooks and I'll be able to get notification based on the activities happening in the emails. For example, if I want to get a notification based on hot bounds or soft bounds, I'll be able to uh, create a webhook and then configure them. And talking about email tracking, so uh, you'll be able to configure this email tracking to have an idea about the uh, domains. So you you'll while working with your uh, in your organization, you work with different uh, customers or people with different uh, organization. So during a uh, while tracking uh, the emails from different organizations, you'll have to go separately and view the uh, emails one by one. But using the email tracking, you'll be able to configure the domain and you'll be able to track them separately based on these domain. And file catch. So if I want to add a image or a file, I'll be able to upload those uh, image uh, files inside my file cache and I'll be able to use those links inside my mails while I'm sending them out. So these are a few of the options available in my mail agent and talking about domains. So previously I was mentioning, you'll be able to manage those uh, uh, domains and here you'll be able to add them uh, directly. And next we have the sender address. So if I want to add a uh, configure a sender address, I'll be able to make use of the option on the top right corner and I'll be able to add them. And talking about reports, we have uh, already created reports. Like you have the uh, report which was wish, uh, shown to you in the dashboard, right? 
so you'll be able to view them and you have the bounds category and browser based uh, data device based data and also i'll be able to create custom reports based on my mail agents so these are few of the reports that can be customized by you and talking about the subscription so uh, as i was mentioning the zepto mail works based on the credit based system so based on your credit you will be given an, a few number of emails and through which you will be able to send the email uh, while uh, you work with uh, campaigns you are sending bulk emails you will have to send them not on a particular day you will have to send them on mul uh, a quite a sequential day right so using these uh, credits and the emails you will be able to send them out and in the subscription part you will be able to handle and manage them so currently i'll be able to uh, use around 1 lakh and 9000 emails and the total number of credits i have is 11 and the expiration uh, expiration date is also mentioned so what if i want to get extra credits if i uh, working with uh, larger people and i want more credits uh, than my current uh, email and then i can use buy extra credits so you have the uh, subscription details so when it was purchased and the current uh, uh, existing uh, credits and also the transactional details so when the uh, um, credits were purchased and all and next we have the suppression list so what if i want to uh, restrict an email from going from creator so i would have a list or database of emails that i usually send on a schedule or based on a workflow it will send automatically but i want to currently restrict few of the emails so using the suppression list i'll be able to add emails and they would not be able to receive the email which has been sent from the creator and same goes for domain so based on domain i'll be able to uh, restrict the email being sent to them so these are few of the options available in zepto mail and talking about few setting options so you know uh, uh, while talking about who will be able to manage or handle the uh, option present in uh, the uh, zepto mail and we have three roles who will be able to view that which is very similar to our users and creator so starting with the postmaster so the postmaster would be uh, very similar to the admin so he'll have all the privileges so when you assign someone as a postmaster he'll be able to uh, edit or view all the data present in the uh, zepto mail and next we have the engineer so the engineer would be on the developer part where he'll be given a limited access and next we have the viewer so the viewer would be uh, given only the viewing access so how will you be able to invite users so on top you have invite users right so i'll be able to add the enter the email and select the uh, user role and you'll have to uh, give them invite so i can also choose different uh, mail agents so you might be handling different mail agents right so currently we have creator so we, i'll click on to creator and i'll be able to give them the invite here next we have notification so if i want to get notification regarding the uh, date of expiry or based on the credit so i'll be able to uh, make use of the setting and get me a notification regarding that and you'll also get notification regarding the email summary as well so currently i have set it for weekly where i'll get an uh, email summary on the so far uh, email count sent the uh, uh, the transaction like the hard bounce soft bounce and these can be uh, handled here and next we have the content setting so if i want to save the email content i'll be able to make use of this option and configure it and export logs so currently uh, if you want to get the uh, uh, if you want to get the logs of the emails which has been sent you'll be able to receive them and same for the activity logs and the suppression list as well and talking about the activity log i'll be able to view all the activities that has been uh, done in the past days so i can also set out few uh, filters and i can give out the actions which has been performed so for example like uh, the mail agent or i can click on to the suppression list so this would allow me to filter out only that uh, details regarding that so you can see there is an uh, entry which has been added so these can be used to have the view of your activity and you can also uh, uh, do the ip restrictions and 
and post that you have an option to delete your account as well so these are few of the uh, options available and uh, these are ways how you will be able to manage your uh, email analytics I mean, manage your emails that has been sent from creator and we'll also talk about few of the key points that we'll have to keep in mind while we are working with the uh, email analytics so starting with the uh, why so why would you require an email uh, analytics so it allows you to get the logs and when you're giving out uh, bulk emails you'll be able to have an analysis or you'll be able to view the analytics of the so far sent emails and what and uh, who will be able to view those uh, uh, data uh, the postmaster the engineer and the viewer will be able to view the data present in the email analytics and credit so as i was talking uh, zepto mail is a credit based uh, working where uh, for one credit you will be able to send around 10000 emails so this would differ based on the plan which you take up for create uh, take up and uh, next we have the validity so when we talk about the credit it will be only available for 6 months the validity of the credit which you purchase is only for 6 months and you will be able to uh, accumulate these uh, monthly credit which has been added so if uh, your uh, your credit gets added on a monthly basis and you want to save those credit it will be only valid for six months of time and we also have added few of the use cases starting with analytics on email so when, while you're sending bulk uh, emails or during campaigns you'll have to get an analysis the number of emails which has been uh, sent and the um, emails which is not being accessed by the uh, customers so these or you require the uh, analysis on that and next managing the bounce back emails in office so if you want to check uh, the bounce back emails so talking about the bounce back emails so if you have entered the email id of an user uh, wrongly and uh, a letter or any of the mistake has happened in the email you'll have to uh, have an count of it right so these bounce back emails will be managed using that and tracking emails of customers and employees so as i was uh, mentioning the number of emails which has been sent based on domains or based on individual emails that can be easily tracked down here and managing sender address so while uh, i was uh, integrating with creator to the zepto mail we were able to see the import option available for adding your sender from sender email from creator to the zepto mail and how you'll be able to manage them as well so these are few use cases that can be used while you're working with the email analytics and talking about the next uh, uh, release which is the api version v2.1 so we know that uh, the API uh, the API uh, v2 version and now starting with the v2.1 we have made few of the changes so let me uh, first give you an uh, intro to the uh, API uh, of creator so the creator provides the rest API that allows you to interact between other applications so you'll be also able to perform few actions like fetch add update and delete uh, data and talking about the uh, new updates in the v2.1 version starting with updated request urls the request header parameters and we have added new parameters and the different api response structures that has been added into the new versions so now let us take a look at one by one and how you'll be able to make use of them starting with the updated request url so now uh, talking about the new request url we have updated the number from the v2 to v2.1 so you can see we have the uh, uh, sample uh, get record url starting with the base url api and you can see v2.1 highlighted here so this is the new updated url request and further on you have the uh, request uh, get record sample url so this is all about the updated request url and next we have the request header parameters so uh, talking about the uh, request header parameters so we know it helps you to fetch a large number of records per uh, api request and it allows you to download the response in different formats and uh, the new uh, v2.1 has added the record cursor and the accept parameters 
So talking about the uh, record cursor, uh, it is uh, when you are including this particular header, you'll be able to bulk fetch a batch of thousand of thousands of record. So through which you'll be able to get uh, more than two hundred record, which was previously. Uh, I mean, you'll be able to get uh, more than two hundred record uh, in our previous version where it was only stick to two hundred. And talking about the accept uh, header parameter. So this uh, this would uh, determine the format in which you can download the API response. So through which you'll be able to get the uh, format on which you want the API to be API response to be downloaded. And next we have few other new parameters. So these would help you to uh, specify the details like the fields you want to be fetched, the number of records you want to be fetched per API request. Starting with the criteria string, field configure string, field string, max record in, and the skip workflow. And talking about the criteria string, this would allow you to give out criteria. Uh, and next, we have the field configure string. This would allow you to determine which field of a record you want to be fetched. And we also have the uh, field configure string. So it is uh, mandatory when the custom values is passed for the field config string. It also allows you to list all the necessary fields that needs to be fetched while performing the about us. And next we have max record. So this parameter would determine the number of records that will be uh, retrieved per fetch request. And we also have the skip workflow. And uh, this parameter would uh, allow you to determine the uh, determine whether you want to skip the specific type of workflow from being triggered while these API calls are being made. So these are few of the new uh, enhancements that has been made in the V2 version with V2.1. Moving on to the next interesting uh, feature release, which is the remove applications from environments. So talking about this particular feature, you will be able to remove an uh, application from the environment uh, directly. And this would eliminate the multi-stage uh, deployment. So when you're trying to remove an application from environment, you will be deleting the other two environments from the application and you'll have only one uh, environment available with you. So when uh, whenever someone is trying to uh, remove an application from an environment, it doesn't mean you are deleting the uh, whole, I mean, uh, the one part of the application. It's just like you are retaining one part of the application. And now let us quickly move into the demonstration on how you'll be able to remove uh, the application from environment going into the creator and solutions so now let us try adding an application into the uh, environment so let me add it into the environment so one uh, the order management application is added into the environments so the, the development process in, uh, process in uh, still in process so once uh, it is completed you will be able to uh, push the application from one environment to the another. And uh, talking about the uh, uh, application being pushed to one environment to another, there should be changes available. So currently we don't have any changes available, right? So let us try making few changes in the application. So we have basic order uh, form here. And let us try adding few there. And um, form builder. I'm adding a single line field to get the description of the product. And now let us give done. You can see you will be able to access the application in three different uh, uh, live modes, uh, the development stage and the production. So when you have uh, moved the application in different uh, environments, you'll be able to view different live modes of them. And now going back to the environments, let me just reload it. And we have changes available. So let me also push them to the staging environment. So I'm selecting all the data to be pushed. And let us uh, give version one. And it is a minor change. If I want to notify, I'll add an email and let's just quickly push it 
so now currently our application in is in locked uh, mode so this is a simple uh, locking mechanism that usually happens when you're trying to uh, push an environment uh, from a development to another one stage to another uh, so that the other users or developer uh, would not be able to make any changes in the application so now uh, let us try adding few uh, data inside my form as well once this process is done so the process publish is in process so we have our uh, application being moved from uh, and uh, one environment to the another one so now let us try adding data in my staging life so uh, one thing we have to keep in mind that whenever we try to uh, add data in your application and when you're removing an application from the uh, environment the data would be lost so the, the data such as uh, you are entering the employee i mean the product data right so this data would be uh, lost while you're removing the application from environments so let me just type in the quantity subtotal and let me give summit. So currently you can see we have one uh, data which has been added in the staging uh, en environment. And now let us try uh, removing the particular uh, application from environment. So let us try removing it. So I'll just stick with the production and let us try remove it. And you can see the application has been removed from the environment. And let us try accessing the application and the data. So you can see the previously entered data before we added in the uh, uh, application is available, but the latest data, the laptop data was entered during the environment stage. It is not available. So this is what happens when you're trying to remove your application from environment and the other changes which was made. The single line field is missing, right? So we didn't push the application to the publish component, right? So the application is not visible since we retain the production environment and we didn't retain the staging environment. So if you want to retain a particular uh, uh, application, I mean, particular uh, environment, so that particular application will be visible here. So these are a few of the options available in the environment. And we'll also, uh, we need to keep in mind that uh, whenever you are working with the environments, the uh, uh, the uh, data would be permanently deleted and also the uh, developers will be removed from the environment. So you might have enabled the, uh, you might have added the uh, developers in the application for these uh, environment purposes. While you're removing the environment, the mapping of the developers will also be removed along with it. So to uh, just remind about the part wherein whenever you are removing an application, only one part of the application will be uh, retained. For example, we have the production environment the, uh, and if I am retaining that uh, environment, only the pro progress that has been pushed to the production environment, that part only will be retained. All the other parts will not be retained in the uh, application. So these are few of the key points that we will have to keep in mind while we are working with the environments. And now let us quickly look into the customizing portal pages. So talking about customizing portal pages, we know we have around different types of uh, portal uh, portals. And we also have three portal pages available in the portals. So talking about sign up page, sign in page and the reset password page. So these different pages allow you to perform different uh, actions. They have different uh, functionalities to be performed by these pages. And uh, starting with the sign up, we know you'll be able to sign up the uh, sign uh, sign up. Uh, you'll be able to sign up for creator and sign in the user if they have already signed up. They'll be able to sign in, and if the user has forgotten their uh, password, they'll be able to reset the password. So uh, while working with the portal pages, you it will be acting as a main interaction, right? So while in an organization to uh, bring in the branding, so to give your own color customization you can customize these portal pages. So now let me take you to uh, the demonstration on how we have customized the pages for the portal and how you'll be able to bring in the branding, how you'll be able to give out few color combinations in your pages. For the employee management, we have created a portal and we have also added a user to it. 
and next to the portal user we have authentication email notification and next you can see the page customization so when i click into it it shows me three different pages starting with the sign in page so if i want to edit it i have already edited few of the uh, data I means data with the um, color combinations and the uh, adding the image so let me take you through these one by one so starting with header so if i want to give a header to my particular portal page i'll be able to give that as well so let me try adding a header here silkar enterprises and you can see it is on to the left side so if i want to give it in in the middle i have options here and you will be able to make it in the middle and not not only that i can also give few other color combinations or i can uh, uh, make it more uh, visible by bolding it out and i can change it to italic i can also underline i can also add it as a link as well so we also have few other options like changing the background color adding an inline uh, image and inserting an html and further on so these are few of the options in the heading and i can also add a paragraph inside my page, sign in page and i'll be able to add image add spacer and add table as well so you can see we have our page here right so this particular form you'll be able to customize starting with the background color border the uh, styling of these uh, uh, form and also the typography field input area and the button so you can see uh, this is an input area i have uh, highlighted it in a different way and the same goes for the button and we have also added a link for for get password and we have uh, made changes with the coloring and the uh, underlining process as well so this is a simple uh, sign in page which we have designed here and now let me give save so to give you an differentiation between the two pages so previously it was a very simple page with a white background with you can see it is on the top i was not able to um, make it more visually appealing so once i have done these different changes it is more appealing it would be very more appealing to the customers so now let us try accessing this particular uh, sign in page so let me copy it and let us go into the uh, account so this is the user let us try accessing from the user point of view so this is our sign in page you can see it is uh, more appealing to us starting with entering the email and the buttons here and if i forgot the password i'll be redirected to the new page so currently we have not made any changes to the uh, reset password page but if i give sign up page we have a new page which is being uh, coming up so this is also being customized with the background image uh, giving out few color uh, for my form customization and the uh, buttons and the uh, links and all so this is how uh, you will be able to give out few customizations to your uh, page uh, which you are working in with and now let us take a look at few of the other releases next in line we have the screen record feature for the support which is powered by quartz so usually what happens when we uh, need to reach, uh, reach out to a support what we'll do we'll uh, send out uh, emails if you want uh, to get any uh, in uh, contact with them what we'll do we'll have a call with them you'll have to set up schedules and you'll have to uh, note down all the issues or error and you'll have to make sure you don't miss out any but using the screen record feature you will be able to uh, easily record your issue or concern and you will be able to present it to the uh, support and starting with the uh, features like you will be able to record the issue and not only that you will be able to record your voice over that particular uh, screen record and not only that you will be able to annotate few of the uh, areas in which you want to highlight you can give out a uh, uh highlighting box or you can point it out through an arrow and not uh, talking about uh, the security part so i am sharing my screen and it is uh, my personal details like my email id my phone number are visible so
so what will i do so here comes the part we have a, an option to uh, to mark it or you have an option to blur out the private uh, details so uh, and post that you will be able to uh, send it to the support here so let us quickly move into the demonstration on how you'll be able to record a particular um, screen and send it to the support Uh, let us quickly get into the application. So employee management and let us get into the edit mode. So you can see uh, we have an option. The Zia uh, board is helpful here. When I click on to the help Zia bar, it gives me the Zia suggestions starting with the documentation for this particular uh, Page we have form, the form published components, all the details related to forms and uh, its configurations. And next you have the uh, call option. So if I want to get a get on a call with the support, I'll be able to make use of this option. And we have chat. And moving to next, we have the support. So starting with creating a support ticket. So if I want to send an uh, issue regarding the uh, through an email, I'll make use of this. And if I want to give uh, access to a support to help me out with the app, I'll make an option, make use of this option. Next, the screen record feature. So when I want to report an issue based on the video recording, I'll click on to the screen record option. And I'll click on to proceed. So this will take me to a different uh, page. And... Here you can see it asked me to give my uh, concern about the uh, recording which is about to happen. And let me give agree and, and my consent. Now when I click on to start recording, my recording would get started. So let me share my screen. And you can see my recording is started and we have to make a note of this. You can see the recording is only for five minutes. So before five, uh, only the screen is on. I mean, the recording is only for available for five minutes only. So let us now quickly move into the error. So I'll get into an workflow. Currently, I have one workflow to notify my employee regarding their form submission. So if I have an error in this particular area. And if I want to uh, get support of get support for this particular coding, I'll just um, make movements over here or I'll type it out over here, error. So now we have taken a simple uh, recording of this uh, particular portion. Let me go back and let me end the recording. So once the recording is done, I can edit the recording or I can retake the recording as well. So now let us try editing the recording. You can see when I click on to editing the recording, it takes me to an area where I'll be able to edit my video which was recorded. So I'll be able to, uh, with the option below, I'll be able to trim my video or, and I can move into the particular area and where I want to uh, perform few uh, annotation or highlighting feature and all. So let me just move this. Yeah, so currently in this area, we want to um, uh, give the support and information about the error which is about to happen. So I'll click on to the highlighting option here and you have a rectangle and then ellipse. So first I'll click on the rectangle and if I want to highlight this whole coding, I'll click on to this highlighting part. So now my coding is highlighted and if I want to give a note to them, so I'll click on the text, I'll be able to add a note here error message for this coding so this would be a simple error uh, i mean message to the uh, support person and uh, if i want to give more highlight to it i can create an arrow so this would uh, be more attractive and they'll be able to view the um, area in which I am pointing it out to. So these are few of the options. So talking about the masking part. So if I want to blur out or block my uh, personal details, I can make use of this option. And this is the area if I want to mask it, I'll be able to mask it directly. 
and below you can see we have few um, uh, uh, the uh, few of the options available where i can extend my masking or where i can uh, extend the particular uh, arrow mark so this is a particular duration on which you want to show this particular element these properties will be added here for this particular duration alone and in this particular uh, video you can see my uh, audio is also being captured so if i want to mute it i'll be able to mute and if i want to give a, a voice over that is also possible so i'll be able to give an voice over to this uh, video which has been recorded and when i give save my uh, recording editing is getting saved it is saved i'll go back and if uh, it, it this would raise as a support starting with my email address and subject and the issue description so if i already have an existing ticket i'll have to enter the ticket number and it will be linked to this particular ticket number directly so these are few of the options that have been uh, that can be made use of while you are screen recording and uh, now uh, let me go back to the uh, presentation and give you few key points that uh, we'll have to uh, note while we are working with the feature so the duration of the screen record is for 5 minutes and uh, the uh, video can be re-edited uh, even after you have completed the recording and you uh, can only be uh, make, you can only make use of this particular feature uh, if you are in this particular dc us europe or india or in the australia data centers currently and uh, next we have the uh, interesting feature which is the pdf support in ocr so we know that ocr field allows you to uh, extract uh, text from an image so now talking about the new release you will be also able to extract the uh, data i mean text from a pdf itself directly so it is applicable for the um, custom model and for the ready to use model as well so talking about the pdf uh, training model you should at least have 5 pdfs to train your uh, ocr model talking about the custom and uh, the pdfs can uh, last up to 2 pages so the each of the pdf can uh, have 2 pages while we are training the model so for this particular uh, feature i have taken a use case uh, where we have uh, trained a resume uh, extraction model so i have uh, added five training models so let me go to the microservices so that we'll have access to the uh, ai model so you can see i have already trained a resume extraction model so using this resume extraction model uh, whenever an employee uploads his pdf the resume pdf the data such as the email name experience and profile will be automatically detected from that uh, that particular pdf and it will be placed inside an uh, field so this is how um, this uh, particular use case will be working and currently you can see i have already trained two versions and uh, i have used around 7 uh, pdf to train them now let us try testing this particular model so let me upload a pdf we have simple pdf here this is a sim sample resume which i got and let us try um, using it for the extraction it is taking some time so using this particular osia model you can see the name of the um, uh, employee the experience is being captured from this part and the profile has also been captured and the email address so it is very similar to the um, uh, custom uh, osia model which in where we train the uh, images for different uh, items like billing invoices and few other uh, documents as well so this is how uh, you will be able to make use of them so how will i be able to uh, implement them inside my application so let us go into the application employee management so we already have a, a form here so let me also try creating another form so through which you will be able to um, upload and uh, resume and get the details so resume extraction 
and for this we need a file upload fee so let us rename it to upload pdf so we have added it now let us use this in the uh, application so using this model we'll have to select the application form name and use this model here and it asks us the model input. We have the upload PDF, uh, which is a file, uh, file upload field. And when I give next, the model output. We have the email, which is a single line. Experience is a multi-line. Name, profile is a multi-line. And let us add field here. So now it is added. Let us have a look at how this would work inside our application. Uploading this and we have few PDF and let us upload it. It is taking some time. Once it is done, all the data from uh, this particular PDF will be extracted and added into our fields directly. And you can give submit and the data would be added into the database. You can see we have the email ID, the experience of the uh, employee and the profile and the name has been automatically added when I give submit. It will be added into our uh, database directly. And talking about it is, it is loading. So talking about the ready to use model. So let us take a look at how the ready to use model would also work. And edit this application. So the ready to use model would also work the same and just we'll need an uh, input field where we'll use the file upload here. So we also have a input a file upload field. I'll just click on to the OCR field from here. We are using a ready to use and click on to next. The uh, input area would be the file upload field resume and mark it. It is added. So let us try using this particular field here. Uh, let me give done. Access this application. Inside my employee details form, we have the OCR added at the end. So let us add and upload and resume. So I'm adding a resume here. Once it gets loaded, all the data would be extracted in the OCR. So this is currently now supported for our PDFs as well. So these are a few of the highlights in the um, OCR. Now let us take a look at few of the key points. So talking about the uh, important point while we are uh, training the OCR model, you must at least have five PDFs and it can uh, contain up to two pages of uh, layout. And uh, the AI models are currently available for the users in the professional and the ultimate plans. So these are a few of the uh, releases, uh, the features and enhancements that we have brought up in this particular session where we saw about uh, the um, uh, OCR field in PDF, I mean OCR field in PDF, the screen record function, the email analytics, uh, and also we got an idea about how you'll be able to make use of them and the different use cases that can be possibly thought of. And what's planned for the upcoming session so we have the release update part three, where we'll touch upon few other uh, release notes, a few other features and announcements that has been brought in Creator. And we'll also have a recap of 2023 Creator Tech Connect series. We'll touch all the different, uh, in detail about all the different features that we have uh, showcased in the past uh, Tech Connect series. And now let us uh, talk about the upcoming sessions as well. So we have the learning table series, uh, which is for creator uh, for media the coming month. So if you are already familiar with learning table series, uh, it is a month on month session, which will happen based on uh, 12 month, 12 industries. So the coming month we have media and it is happening on the 7th of December. So our trainers, uh, co-trainers will also be sharing you the link for the uh, session. So if you have already registered for the session, uh, it you don't have to register it again since it is a recurring session. 
if uh, you can also share it with your other colleagues who would be interested in uh, the industry based uh, solutions and talking about the creator tech connect series uh, as i was mentioning next month we have the recap and release updates part 3 and uh, next month session we have it on the 14th of december so you can make use of this uh, scanner or you will be able to get the uh, link which will be shared by our co-trainers in the chat box uh, the same goes for this as well so it is a recurring session you don't have to register for this again if you have registered for this uh, session already you can also share it with other colleagues who are interested in about knowing creator to have idea about the advanced concept the technical nuances and the uh, features which is being presented so uh, we also have uh, a few polls which will be ra raised by our co trainers as well so we request you to participate in the polls as well and if you have any other questions uh, related to training uh, you can drop an email uh, to us at training at zohocreator.com. Uh, thank you everyone for participating in the uh, Technic series. So we look forward for your participation in our upcoming sessions as well. Thank you so much. I'll be closing the session for today.